Hey YouTube, I'm Cody, this is Christian. Today we're both Cody, both doing Cody things. We wanted to cover one of the most critical topics to our business that we do in any piece of buying real estate. It is the most important thing, which is forming the relationships in person with other people. If you watched the Bigger Pockets episode, I just aired episode uh, 605. In the middle of that, they surprised me with a mock call to investors to raise capital. And the difficulty is there should be a relationship before you get there. We're not traditionally just gonna reach out and start calling people saying, hey, we have an opportunity. I already know what their goals are, the reason behind those goals, and they know a lot of my story. So the setup was a little bit hard. What we really should have done in that segment is I should have just taken the time to book a meeting. Hey, I have an opportunity based on our last conversation. I wanna run an idea past you. Well, what's your idea? I'll do you one better. I wanna take you out to coffee and I wanna break this down step by step. This uniquely hits your goals and we would have rolled from there. The in-person meeting is everything. We actually started by being transactional. When we first learned this, the call was pretty much to cold call someone and say, hey, would you consider an offer on your building? And that's what pretty much everyone does. We don't want a cold calling job and I don't wanna make hundreds of dials. Through trial and error and actual experience, we've refined this. This is what the actual meeting should start to look like. Cody, I want you to intro this because this is something you really learned with a sixplex in Moses Lake. Yeah, so I actually learned this over in central Washington by being transactional. Now, I started out, I bought a 12plex on the market. Well, that was pretty transactional. It was, you know, they listed it and they wanted to sell it, so I wanted to buy it. And that's pretty much how that came together. The second deal, was a little bit similar, except for it was off market. And then I ended up buying a sixplex in central Washington. Well, there's not a whole bunch of sixplexes in Moses Lake. And so what I did was I, I looked for the other ones and I ended up calling up owners, say, hey, I just bought a, a sixplex in your market. I saw you had something similar. I was curious if you'd be open to selling. That is how I got started. And what I quickly realized is that I got shut down a lot more when I approached it that way. And thinking about it today, looking back into the past, I mean, why wouldn't I get shut down? They don't know who I am. They don't know what my goals are. They don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I don't know anything about them other than they own a property. It was very transactional and it just overall was not a solid approach. And so I kept making that phone call. I kept trying to buy their property and I would put a month or two, maybe three months in between each call and I'd get shut down every time. Along the way though, they started to remember who I was. I make the phone call say, hey, I'm that 20 year old, now 21, who botched the phone call with you way back when. And I'm just curious if you'd be open to selling. He said, well, no. So I go, oh, well, shoot, that doesn't even work. What I did decide to do is later down the road, I gave him a phone call and I said, hey, saw you on the sixplex. I've been calling you for a while. I don't want to buy it anymore. I actually don't know how I would. Everything I bought in the past was seller finance. I'm curious how you got to where you're at. Could I take you out to coffee to learn what you've built because what you built is pretty cool i mean granted it was a phenomenal property and from that he said yeah let's let's go grab coffee and so we met up in auburn and out of that he didn't end up offering to sell me the property but before any of that happened i had to build a relationship i had to share who i was what i was doing where i was going and why i was going there and i had to inquire on the similar points for him absolutely and we did this not just with him, but we took that and we applied it to other owners, uh, starting in Moses Lake. There are several people who we have tight, tight relationships with who are now offering us deals that no one else has an opportunity to do. The terms are different, the down payments are lower because they have faith in our ability to execute. They've seen what we've done and they love our goals and our direction. They wanna help us get there. And when someone's looking for seller financing, creative financing, looking for a leg up in a market, People tend to go after the deal. I need to do the best deal. I have to do a discount. I'm gonna negotiate on price. And if you do that, you're gonna create a very, very busy job and you're gonna compete with a lot of people. If you have that relationship and that buy-in, when you're working with someone who wants to help you and you want to help them, you're gonna have opportunities that no one else has and do deals that no one else can do, which is how Cody and I went as fast as we have. And I can genuinely say that the people I bought from, I could not do this without them. I had to have that relationship because they've gotten offers on some of their properties 
And they've turned them down and said, no, I'm selling to Cody. And then they end up selling it to me. Like they've given me a chance that no one else was willing to give me because I went out and really put the relationship first and it stayed true to this day. Relationship before all else. The real estate comes and goes. You can buy so much real estate and you'll never own it all. At the end of the day, if you have one or two solid relationships with people, you'll get opportunities that seem like once in a lifetime quite more often than once in your lifetime. Now, a question I got in response to one of our last one of our recent YouTube videos was, does this work everywhere? And you had someone beat you up on TikTok uh, saying, you can't do this in Texas. Well, this does work everywhere. Uh, over the last few years, we took a few mentees. We, we ran people through training on how do we do what we do in Moses Lake. Not past few years, past seven months. Okay, past seven months, that's fair. I'm the numbers guy, so. <laughs> in the recent past, we've helped a couple of people run through this proving the concept that you can do this anywhere in any market. And the lesson there is absolutely yes, you can. We recently, a few weeks ago, had one of our mentees, first owner meeting he's ever booked. The person he booked a meeting with happens to live in Texas. He owns more than pretty much every one of our contacts combined. Very, very big player. I'm excited to meet him someday. He is a very, very, he's just a really fun guy. There are a lot of people who call him. Even during our meeting, he took phone calls for people trying to buy houses and multifamily that he owns. He doesn't take a lot of meetings. They called. They're not the best caller of all time. They're not the most skilled. They're not the most practiced. But they gave relatable points. They communicated who they were, talked about their past military experience, which connected with them. They got complete buy-in to the point where he asked, hey, can you fly down and let's get dinner? I actually joined for that meeting because it was an unusually large opportunity. And we got to sit down for three hours in Texas and talk to someone about exactly how they came to this country with $900 and built a massive portfolio. The lessons I learned from that meeting alone make it worth it 100 times the cost of flying to Texas and back. Stellar meeting, and there's opportunities coming out of that that could be huge. Now, the deal doesn't matter nearly as much as the experience. The fact that there's amazing opportunities, we may do some of our largest transactions ever through that, that's not the most valuable piece. The most valuable piece for me is I saw what someone can do. He used very, very little debt to pick up thousands of units, starting with $900. Incredible story. The lessons there are huge, and I didn't have to slam the phones for that. That was one person making one phone call. You can do this just a few calls a week. As long as you get, you know, once every week, every other week, meeting a new owner and forming a new relationship, that's more pipeline than you can possibly ever close. There will be more opportunities. It's a tight knit community. What you'll find is you meet a few owners who control a few properties in a market you want to invest in. They can connect you to everyone else. Your pipeline will take care of itself. This doesn't have to be a full-time job hammering the phones. We're certainly not calling people saying, hey, I got an opportunity. Here's all the details. We're calling saying, hey, we've met before. I heard your objectives. I want to help you move forward. I think I found the opportunity to do that. Can we meet again? Meetings happen in person. For everyone who watched my Bigger Pockets episode, I apologize for not covering that. It is the most important thing we do. Absolutely go out and do this. Anyone at any level, any experience, all you have to do is call up an owner. Instead of calling on their property, just say, hi, it's me. Insert first name here. <laughs> hi, me. <laughs> hey, me. I'm Christian. I'm Cody. I'm Doing whoever. Cody things. Doing Cody things. You don't even need to be perfect. No. You don't need to be polished. The fact that you're going to make mistakes on the phone call is going to show the other party that you're not over scripting this. You're not being genuine. I mean, you are being genuine. You're not being disingenuous. Mm -hmm. You're just, you're not trying to be perfect. I know I'm not perfect and I know I'm far from the smartest person in the room. My vocabulary is really bad. I make a lot of mistakes when talking and you know, I've got one thing that I can fall back on, which is math. But when it comes to you know, social skills or a whole bunch of things, different topics, I'm not the smartest. I'm never going to pretend to be, but the things that I know to be true for myself is that everything I want, someone else has already done. 
And so I just have to go connect with other people that have done it, that see that I'm trying to be as genuine as possible. And I'm just being me trying to go accomplish things so that I can take care of my goals and help them take care of their goals. Just stay true to that. You don't need to be the most polished. It's the reason we don't edit any of our videos. We don't want you to think that we're just over scripting this and thinking it's all just live. It's what comes to our head. We don't plan this out prior other than just a couple talk tracks, just a couple touch points we need to hit. So as you're doing this, go out, just focus and prioritize building a one or two, maybe three solid relationships. And that is all you need to go from where you're at to wherever you want to be. And if you're spinning your wheels right now trying to figure out how to do this, really don't overthink it. If you want an actionable step out of this call, find one owner and meet with them. Just in the next, let's put a timeline on it. In the next 14 days, find one person who owns a piece of real estate that you'd love to own. Don't try to buy it from them. Just get a meeting with them and learn how they got there. I promise you, you'll be farther after that meeting than you are right now. So that's it for today. I don't know how long this has been running. We did it on the front camera today. <laughs> However, if you haven't already, check out the rest of the channel. We're gonna keep updating these videos three times a week. If you have questions that you want answered, we do Whiteboard Wednesday every single Wednesday. Drop them in the comment section below and we'll see you guys next time.